Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. It's my great pleasure to introduce the first speaker of today's program, Professor Massimo Fagioli. <coughs> Professor Fagioli is an Italian scholar who moved to the United States in 2008, where he is now a full professor of theology and religious studies at Villanova University in Philadelphia. He is an expert of, on church history, especially Vatican II, and the author of more than 10 books. The latest book he's working on is about the history of the Roman Curia. As many of you here will know, Professor Fagioli is a prolific writer and commentator. He writes regularly for Italian and English-speaking journals about the church, about religion, and about politics. He is a column in La Croix International and is the contributing editor of Commonweal. His books and articles have been published in more than 10 languages, and he himself speaks nearly as many too. <laughs> Apart from his native Italian, he's fluent in English and French, has a working knowledge of Spanish and German, and he's currently studying Russian. But it's not just his prodigious output that distinguishes him as an outstanding scholar. It's the breadth and depth of theological knowledge that he brings to his work and his capacity to apply it to a diverse range of subjects from the historical to the contemporary that really sets him apart. Professor Fagioli will speak for about 45 minutes, after which there will be time for questions and we do encourage you to make use of that opportunity. It's my great pleasure now and a personal delight to ask you to give a warm welcome to Professor Fagioli. Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here uh, once again, my first time was unforgettable because it, it was on the day of the Brexit referendum and I was here, so, uh, yeah. Theology between the university and the church as a field hospital. I will address this issue in two parts. In the first, a more brief part, I will address the issue, the, the situation of theology in the university from an, a US perspective. And in the second longer part, I will offer a few reflections on theology in the church understood as a field hospital, as Pope Francis defined it. And so first point, theology in the university. From the point of view of the history of, of institutions, there is a very close connection between the development of theology, the university, and the church in the Western world, beginning with European Christendom at the beginning of the second millennium. The end of Christendom as a system has brought in systemic changes in the relations not only between church and state, and religion and politics and society, but also, also between theological thinking and education, and cultural production and transmission. And there are, in my opinion, two main issues when we look at the relations between theology and the university today, especially from the point of view of Catholic institutions of higher education in the largest network of such institutions today, that is, in the United States. The first issue has to do with, with the intellectual production system of an ecclesial and religious community that does not enjoy, like in the United States, the shelter of the, of, of the concordant system and of a clerical system for the protection of educational and cultural institutions in which theology is received, is produced, and taught. The private education system, in other words, is exposed to systems of political and financial patronage, the almost unlimited availability of private sponsors and donors, typical of this era, focused on the relations between global capitalism and cultural production agencies. 
in what I think was a perverse reversal of fortunes, soon after academic theology in the United States had freed itself from the oversight or control of church hierarchies, a, a new captivity began in the hands of big business America, happy to donate money to conservative or traditionalist Catholic projects on college campuses and Catholic universities. Theological traditionalism and apologetic literature are accompanied, strangely enough, by a neoliberal economic ideology. So here there is a Catholic intellectual crisis in North America that stems from here and is at the root, and not just one aspect, of the political crisis of the United States of these last few years. The revolt of illiberal populism feeds on the emerging talents of the so-called religious right, including the Catholic right and alt-right, which has entered now the academic and cultural mainstream. There is a political cultural canon, largely not theological, but clearly defined, which appeals to traditionalist Catholic students and professors also, by the way, in terms of rejecting Vatican II and of rejecting the whole of post-conciliar theology. So it is not clear whether today there is a theological canon on the other political side, though, that is in Catholic theology that, that, that refers to Vatican II. On the right, there's a very clear offer and demand. On the Vatican II side, it's not so clear. And this is why the theological offer often tries to catch up and remain relevant by teaching courses that paradoxically in the mainstream Vatican II progressive academia have made theology not more but less relevant. This anxiety of relevance highlights that Catholic theology has often been reduced to a very short set and particular aspects of the Catholic social doctrine that can be spent immediately on the battlefield of the so-called culture wars. This, the second issue concerns the institutional and functional disassociation between academic theology and the church as a system, not just the hierarchy, but the, the, the community of the believers. The result of this disassociation is an impoverishment, in my opinion, of the intellectual and theological tradition on both sides of the ideological spectrum. On the liberal progressive side, in recent decades, there has been a tendency to redefine the Catholic identity and mission of universities and school with, with phrases such as in the Catholic tradition or in the Catholic heritage, which tend to be interpreted very differently. This was the result of the transition from the criterion of the recruitment of faculty and of administrators on the basis of confessional membership, hiring only Catholics, to recruitment in light of the mission of the university. Meaning, regardless of the, of the confessional membership of faculty and of administrators. Now, if the hiring of Catholics did not guarantee and does not guarantee in itself that the Catholic mission of these universities is preserved and cultivated, the same can also be said for hiring for mission. The overcoming of confessionalism in an ecumenical vision of theology and of theological studies was, to be very brief, was much less transformative than the absorption by the mechanism of the market. Now, this is part of the problem that Catholic theology has become increasingly absent from the radar of clerical and lay Catholic leaders in the United States. Bishops, but also public intellectuals, Catholic philanthropy, and 
what makes America work or not work. This means also that in these last two decades, at least, generations of students in the United States, and often those who, who interpret their Christian vocation in a militant style of politics, have learned Catholicism not from theologians, but from professors of literature, of art, of history, of politics, of law, and especially of business. This is an epochal failure on the part of, a, of, of academic theology in the United States. It is a question, I believe, of ecclesial awareness. That is what is, in my opinion, a lack of awareness of the fact that the, the Catholic academic theological cultural complex lives in the same cultural, institutional, and political environment as the Catholic Church. Catholic academic theology and the Catholic Church today live in a situation of physical and institutional and, e and even emotional distance from each other, but they don't realize that they breathe the same air. In the US, at the moment, the so-called liberal progressive uh, 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 Catholic theology is not interested, sadly, in offering to the church on the ecclesial scene an alternative theological vision to the return of neo-traditionalism. This carries serious risks. From both an, an intellectual and a professional point of view, it is, I think, an illusion to think that the departments of theology and religious studies in Catholic universities can take the lead to rely on political party rhetoric and tactics and the uncritical acceptance of new forms of fundamentalism, nor this can represent for the church a strategy for the survival of theology. Also because in a secular age, the relationship between theology and politics is totally asymmetrical, or at least it is perceived and experienced in this way. And there's one more problem that the neo-traditionalist and the Vatican II side of the Catholic spectrum enjoys a natural monopoly over certain types of ideologized Catholics and finds a natural partner in the clerical institution, in the United States at least. Leaving aside for the moment the question of the, of, of the, uh, the differences between theology and religious studies, one therefore has to ask what is the future of departments of theology and all the studies in Catholic universities in the United States. Second, what is the meaning, the potential, and the risks of the church as a field hospital for theology if what I said on the situation of theology in Catholic institutions in the United States is, is, uh, is true. The, the difficult situation in which theology finds itself in academia is, I believe, undeniable. But there is a vocation crisis for theology also in the church. And this has to do with some interpretations of the very effective, very rich metaphor of the church as a field hospital after battle, as Pope Francis put it. This very successful metaphor has become one of the most effective ways to describe Pope Francis' ecclesiology, but also, more generally, Pope Francis and battle pontificate. The first and most important of all the interviews Francis gave was the one to the editor-in-chief of the Jesuit-run and Vatican-vetted magazine La Civiltà Cattolica, uh, uh, to Father Antonio Spadaro, at the end of the summer of 2013. And so this is how the new pope, who had been elected less than six months earlier, framed the function of the church in the context of a discussion on the space occupied by the uh, hot button or pelvic issues in Catholicism. Quote, I see clearly, Pope Francis said, 
that the thing the church needs most today is the ability to heal wounds and to warm the hearts of the faithful. It needs nearness and proximity. I see the church as a field hospital after battle. It is useless to ask a seriously injured person if he has high cholesterol and about the level of his blood sugars. You have to heal his wounds. Then we can talk about everything else. Heal the wounds, heal the wounds. And you have to start from the ground up. End quote of the interview that was published in various languages in September uh, 2013. So here Francis was responding to the crisis of the authority of the church and its teaching that is often reduced, especially in the North American context, to a very narrow and limited set of issues, most obviously issues of sexual morality. And Francis was trying to recenter the meaning of the church in a pastoral sense. But the metaphor of the church as a field hospital must be seen, I believe, in the context of, of other shifts that are happening in Catholicism today that have a deep impact on theology. And, I, and here I have made a list of uh, six uh, symptoms uh, or shifts that are happening. The first one, the field hospital and the global Catholic Pangea. The turn of the church to the battlefield, not as a combatant, but as a field hospital, is part of a larger turn to the global south. One of the set, set of the changes set in motion by Vatican II and put forward even more by Pope Francis. But now it takes place also in the context of the different plates of Catholicism becoming more distant one from the other in a dynamic that is not simply of decentralization. This turn to the global means also, for example, that Vatican II is perceived more as more as Western, as white. And this happens also within Western Catholicism in the context of the drive for more diversity, equity, and inclusion in universities aimed at a legitimate and necessary diversification of the canon of texts read and studied, especially in the required courses in the humanities. This is relativizing anything that has European roots in favor of cultural, literary, and religious traditions coming from other parts of the world. But now, diversity, equity, and inclusion seems to have become the mission of some Catholic institutions. In itself, this risks supporting the ethics, or the lack of ethics, of already existing university programs and of a certain kind of, of, of a political correctness and not responding to that in a creative way. This is having consequences on the coherence of the, the theological canon, not just in universities, but also in the church. Also because emphasis on a certain kind of, of diversity often emanates from a lack of acknowledgement or knowledge of the richness of the virtues and values of Western culture, including, for example, the Jewish and, and, and Islamic voices and influences on medieval thinking, for example. Second symptom, the church as a field hospital is part for, of the push for a redefinition of the institutional dimension of the Ecclesia. Since the 1960s, both at the political and the philosophical level, our zeitgeist favors the element of movement, especially social cultural movement, over the institutional. In the Catholic Church today, this means many things. One of them being, in these last 40 years, uh, or 50, being the rise in the role of the so-called new ecclesial movements, new lay communities, uh, charismatic, evangelical, uh, 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 Pentecostal. This is 
it is part of our present and of the future of the church. There's no question about that. But one question that must be asked is what kind of theology these new movements have and propose to the, to the church. In the Catholic Church, in these last 50 years, their record and their success is exactly about not having a recognizable theological profile and message, but rather witnessing in very creative ways a model of the church as a servant, active in, in the social domain, in social work, and so on. Their absence from the theological and ecclesial debate with their own voices, for example, on the issue of the sexual abuse crisis in the Catholic Church is one of, of, the, of the evidences of this theologically anonymous space they occupy in the church. And so the New Lay movements embody the divarication between the social and the theological in Catholicism today. Furthermore, the metaphor church as field hospital needs to clarify which church it is. Just that of the, of the movements or of the lady according to the theology or the laity, not belonging to any movement, or there is a need to understand the institution itself as a field hospital. In this sense, the metaphor of the field hospital should avoid the risk of appearing anti-institutional. Third, a field hospital that tries to be less clerical, but has become more papal and more dominated by the media and the social media. Theology as faith seeking understanding is also about critical thinking. And this means that sometimes it is necessary to to think critically in a faithful Catholic way also about the teaching of the church. But thinking critically has become more difficult given the shifting of the ecclesiological and theological debate from one old venue of, of conversation, the university, the journals, the cultural events, to another the digital media, the social media, and the cyberspace. A church more engaged in social issues, in other words, has become a church more exposed to the unwritten and unregulated mechanisms of the media and social media, meaning also new forms of censorship that have been added to the previously existing and well-known ecclesiastical systems of silencing and of marginalizing voices of faithful dissent, favoring either the idolizing of, 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 of a church leader or, on the other side, the anti-system anger. It has become more difficult to be critical thinkers in a church that has become more polarized, more, more partisan, more like a battlefield internally and in haste to influence. The church as a field hospital must include a serious theological analysis and a disciplined use of the digital space because, this, because there's a risk of the creation of a space that recognizes itself as Catholic but also as immune from wounds and therefore utterly uninterested in, in anything that is about being a field hospital. Fourth, a church as a field hospital is a church where the social, social concerns, social issues, social actors, is seen often as the ultimate or the only possible, or, or, or the, only, the only possible embodiment of the theological. The meaning of being Catholic has often been reduced to Catholic social thought, or Catholic social uh, tradition, or doctrine. This is a problem for the standing of theology, not just in the university, but also in the church. There is a dangerous conjunction where the often exclusive emphasis on the social 
meets with the principles of commodified vocational training, teaching students to meet the emergency and measure their impact in the world rather than the interactors who actualize the often invisible possibilities of God's grace in the world. It is, honestly, a view of theology that is not entirely different from the one that university technocrats have. Together with the reluctance to, to craft theology on the basis of reflective and coherent aggiornamento, the emphasis on the social, when it is exclusive, has left a vacuum where the new traditionalist apologists can rush in to craft an objectivist and juridical apologetics with, which fills the space and, and feeds students and the public's need for religious certainty. But it, also, it has also left another vacuum that is in those the, the, the theological sub-disciplines that are relevant for the viability of the church as a field hospital. For example, the theology of ministry and the theology of the ministry of women in the church. There's no field hospital if we don't talk seriously about the theology of ministry and of ministry of women in the church. It is just one example. Five, the church as a field hospital can become a hub for that particular form of anti-intellectualism, which is the post-tradition or the anti-tradition Catholic culture. There is the risk that a church as a field hospital can be seen favoring spiritualist fads, both progressive and conservative forms of post-tradition. This is a moment when Catholic theology in academia in its assertion of academic freedom, isolated from the ecclesia, has divorced or threatens to divorce us from the Catholic uh, tradition now, when it is crucial to be articulating and living out that tradition in the face of a disintegrating post-enlightenment Western culture. The idea of the church as a field hospital can become, I, I'm afraid, a dead-end refuge, actually a self-annihilation for a Catholic theological uh, tradition that the universities seems often to have to start over again from zero with little or no past to rely on. Six and final, the church as a field hospital and clerical theology. With its non-clerical or or post-clerical undertones, the field hospital embraces the end of a certain ecclesiocentrism. But at the same time, it could hide one aspect of the crisis of the Vatican II theology of the laity. In a field hospital church, lay people might have, in the, in the future, fewer avenues to access to theology as a profession and as a vocation. And theology could become, again, a clerical profession in the sense for members of the clergy and religious orders only. This time, the exclusion would be based not on canonical or ecclesiological premises, but simply on the conditions of the job market for uh, theologians, both in academia and other sectors. This means, again, that in order to function, a church as a field hospital must go hand in hand with a renewed theology of ministry. And so these six that I've tried to identify are both phenomena that are visible in the church of, the, of today, and they relate to the image of the, of the church as a field hospital. All these phenomena talk about a vocation crisis of theology that has become more evident during Pope Francis' pontificate and not because of him. I want to be very clear on, on, on this. But this pontificate represents a crucial moment of redefinition of ecclesiology 
And it is time to ask some questions on the role of theology in this process. Third, theology in the ecclesia and in the polis. The metaphor of the church as a free hospital has captured the attention because it, it synthesizes very effectively the way in which Pope Francis saw the, the situation of emergency for the church at the beginning of his pontificate. The emergency is not over. And this emergency metaphor cannot stop us from asking some questions uh, about what it means for theology to be a church as a field hospital. What kind of theological formation can support the church as a field hospital? From the other side, what kind of theological formation can be offered by the church as a field hospital? And so here Francis gave some answers to this in a video message that he sent to the participants to an International Theological Congress in, in, in Argentina in September uh, 2015, where he said, quote, I think the study of theology is of the greatest importance. It is an irreplaceable service to the life of the church. Not infrequently, a kind of opposition is, is constructed between theology and pastoral care, as though they were two opposing separate realities which have nothing to do with one another. Not infrequently, we identify doctrine with the conservative, the retrograde. And on the contrary, we think that pastoral care is another, is another adaptation, a reduction, and accommodation, as if, as if they had nothing to do with one another. Thus, we create a false opposition between the so-called pastorally minded and the academics, those on the side of the people and those on the side of doctrine. We create a false opposition between theology and pastoral care, between the, the believer's reflection and the believer's Life. Life then has no space for reflection, and reflection finds no space in life. The great fathers of the church, Irenaeus, Augustine, Basil, Ambrose, to name a few, were great theologians because they were great pastors. End quote. Now, it's clear that this metaphor is incredibly important, effective, and has a huge uh, 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 potential. In a field hospital, a church that goes forth, theology must not be uh, secluded in classroom, laboratories, uh, seminars, and so on. It must take a, an interest in what tires and worries, but also makes joyful people on the street of our cities, what men and women of, uh, of today hope for the future, what our historical moment requires that we uh, take seriously into consideration. But this, I believe, is a time of reckoning and of reassessing and of rebalancing. In what sense? Theology in the Catholic tradition is a reflection on the faith done in the polis and in the ecclesia. At the same time, theology for the police, for our cities, for our communities, civil, political, is viable, I believe, if it is also theology in the ecclesia and for the ecclesia, in a vital relationship with the community of, 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 of believers. The challenge is twofold here. On the one hand, Catholic theology must rediscover its ecclesial character. It must maintain its, its constant dialogue with other disciplines, but also take seriously its role, we, which is also of service with its own method, dignity, and autonomy to the ecclesial uh, uh, community. The old ecclesiocentric exclusivism and new fundamentalism must be rejected in favor of a courageous reading of the signs of the times. On the other hand, the ecclesia must take theology seriously. And this is a problem, I'm afraid, we rarely hear about. 
Advancing into the principle of the pastorality of doctrine never had to face the anti-intellectual mood, which is now the flip side of the anti-institutionalism and of the anger against the hierarchical system. Theology must face the challenge of diversity and inclusion in the polis, as well as in the church, both in its ecclesial and academic components. It is not just an issue of restructuring. It's an issue, I believe, it's a moment of conversion. This conversion must, uh, is finding us before the risk of what the late Italian author and uh, philosopher called the risk of becoming spiritual tourists. In one, in one of his last books, uh, uh, called The Unnameable Present, Calasso described the relationship of our world with faith, not just Christian, but uh, uh, faith, which is divided between what he called terrorists on one side and the tourists of the sacred on the other side, between fundamentalism and the Silicon Valley. Assuming a leave from the perspective of faith as a prerequisite for, for the scientific reliability of thinking about religion, and as a condition for living in a, in a university, could make teachers and students, but all of us in the end, spiritual tourists, were the choice to live rather than just visit. A religious world, in, in, to live in a tradition, is a choice that is frowned upon, if not considered incompatible with the university. So here, there's no doubt that the practices of Christian discipleship come first, and then intellectual reflection. But the reflection is, is essential to clarify further implications at the level of practice. The insistence on duties of the church and Christian towards social justice, diversity, and inclusiveness needs absolutely doctrinal and theological foundations. The, the tradition of Catholic social thought, I believe, can survive only on the basis of sound theological foundations. A theology, of course, that is different from the apologetics of the tradition or, or from mere support of the current magisterium. A metamorphosis towards a post-theological and a post-ecclesial horizon would sooner or later make social Catholicism not only politically and culturally irrelevant, but also intellectually impossible to explain and to justify to itself. This crisis does not only affect the United States, and is part of the transformation underway in the very idea of university on a global level. It would be an illusion to think that the Catholic intellectual and social tradition, and with it also the idea of the church as a field hospital, can thrive or, or even survive regardless of what happens to the Catholic academic institutions and the theology in those institutions. <coughs> The university is one of the places, not the only one, but is one of the most important places where the church elaborates its thinking. The challenges against the freedom of, the, of, uh, the, of the theological thinking are no longer only, and no longer mainly those that derive from ecclesiastical control or from political control. They derive, they derive from the huge dislocation of power of our time, from the axis between church and state until the 19th century, more or less, to the power of the market, from the political to the economic, from the bourgeois to the global. Just a few words of, of conclusion. Pope Francis' metaphor of the field hospital is the most powerful image of this pontificate effort to save the Catholic Church from the danger of falling into the same or similar uh, trap 
in which, I have to say, the Russian Orthodox Church fell in the 1990s. The church downgraded as an ideological refuge for both romantics and cynics from the shipwreck of collective identities that coagulated the world in the Cold War. At the same time, in this pontificate, there has been a kind of asymmetry in the relationship between theology, university, and the church. And so the Phil Hospital is important to start healing the tragic rift between theology, not just and the church, but for example, theology and spirituality. This is one of, of, the, of the big problems that we have. But to Pope Francis' idea and project of an ecclesiology of, of church reform, I think about this, this whole process, and has corresponded on the other side not much attention to the role of theology and the university in the church, I think. So Hippo Francis has said often that the church is not an NGO. But there is a risk for the intellectual life in the church as a field hospital. At the same time, when the Catholic intellectual debate is in many parts of the world languishing in, in academia. For the church, the risk is to become like the NGO sphere whose intellectual depth and breadth are, are, are contracting all the time. In, in some areas, this is very clear. Finally, field hospitals need a, a triage uh, zone. They need nurses. They need uh, stretcher bearers. But just like the church, they also need doctors. Thank you very much.